certainly turned out to be a book that brought a lot of new fans into the business and a lot of relapse fans back into the business. Batman Hush is one of the all-time best Batman stories, and definitely the best story of the past 20 years. Court of Owls, you come in a close second. Comic experts, you're thinking, thanks dude for saying something ridiculously obvious. But for those not on the inside, this story is a great way to break into Batman comics. It's truly accessible. Written by the now head of Marvel Television, Jeff Loeb, just before he signed with Marvel exclusively, and drawn by DC Comics co-publisher Jim Lee. I thought it would just be another Batman story, and Jeff realized that we may not do a lot of Batman stories together, so he said, look, let's do a story that has all the greatest Batman villains. I'll figure something out that's a great murder mystery because we want to lean into the fact that Batman's not just a great crime fighter, he's also an amazing detective, the world's greatest detective. Fresh off selling his Image Comics Wildstorm imprint to DC, Lee was a bit notorious for missing deadlines. So when it came to returning to a monthly run on a comic, there came an internal gentleman's wager. So I kind of took a bet with a couple people internally at DC that I could do it, and I worked on it in secret, really, because I didn't want to embarrass myself and say publicly I was going to do it and then not be able to do it. So you have a friendly bet, least competitive nature, and a chip on the icon's shoulder. And I think just the, the weight and the responsibility of running my own company under image was something that really took its toll on my ability to draw monthly comics or any sort of comics. And so at that point, I think a lot, there was a whole generation of readers that hadn't known of my work or seen my work through regular monthly comics. And I think I hadn't done it for so long that I, I think most people had given up on me that I couldn't do it anymore. Well, we definitely didn't give up on you, that's for sure. And when you pick up Hush and just thumb through it, it's like the action-packed, iconic 90s style that Jim Lee helped create. It grew up and got a little bit more cynical. Yeah, I think it really extended my career. Working on Hush, uh, it was like 2002, 2003, was something that, looking back on it, I don't, if I hadn't done that, I think um, I would have really kind of moved to a period where a lot of fans wouldn't have known my work. You know, I had a period of popularity when I worked on the X-Men at Marvel, but that was in the early 90s. And, and so I hadn't really done anything major in a long time. The story does a great job of offering something for people new to Batman comics and for those of us that have been around for a while. For newbies, you get a tour through all the pantheon of Bat villains, and you have enough history of Batman to set up context so you don't feel lost. For vets, there's a winding mystery that stumps Batman into the very final issue. There's also a huge look at the entire Bat family, which is my favorite part, and also, of course, awesome pacing and art. I was just trying to draw the best Batman story I could and really measure up to the quality of the scripts that he was delivering to me. And I didn't really realize at the time I was doing it or when I was coming out how much of an impact it would have on a lot of comics fans at the time. It generally never do when you're doing the work itself, but it certainly turned out to be um, a book that brought a lot of new fans into the business and a lot of relapse fans back into the business. And so it's a book that I see quite a lot when I sit down and do, you know, autograph signing sessions at conventions. Autograph signings just like this one I got from Lee a few years ago. Also, this Batman profile sketch he did has to be the fastest in history. I think it took him like five seconds. Lee may not have known the impact this story would have when he made it, but it's just as good for vets and newbies alike. Also. What happened to that guy that bet Lee he couldn't do it? Uh, it was uh, Mike Carlin. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even think he was the Batman editor at the time. It's just someone I knew from my days at Marvel. And uh, so he, we actually bet $100. So he sent me a check for 100 bucks and uh, I, just, I just pinned it to the wall by a drawing board and never cashed it.